The film begins with Remy contemplating Schrodinger's cat experiment, wondering how the cat could be alive and dead at the same time. Remy belongs to the world set in 2025, where advancements in medical technology have perfected biomechanical organs. A corporation known as The Union sells these expensive artifacts on credit, and when customers are unable or unwilling to pay for their artifacts, The Union sends repo men to locate and forcibly repossess the organ, which results in the death of the owner. Remy is considered the best of The Union's repo men and visits a customer, Mr. Smith, just as he gets involved with a girl in his apartment. Though Smith promises to pay up, Remy replies that that's not his department and stuns him for the organ extraction. When Smith's girlfriend tries to stop him, Remy knocks her out. He reads a legal notice before performing the surgery there and then. The following morning, Remy wakes up in his home next to his wife, Carol, who prepares to leave for work earlier and asks Remy to take their son, Peter, to school. Remy spends the rest of the day hunting down people for their organs for the union. Remy returns to the union's office and watches as his boss, Frank, convinces a hesitating customer who is shocked by the absurdly high price of the biomechanical organs to sign the contract and sign up for an installment plan. Frank visits Remy in his locker room to inform him not to appear in front of the customers, as doing so makes them afraid, and they pay the cost of the organ in full, which doesn't make the company more profits without the added interest on installments. He is surprised by his friend and partner Jake Freivald, who uses the stun gun on him, though Remy isn't knocked out by it. Remy recalls how Jake used to fight Remy in school before the two decided to be friends and grew up to join the union together. Carol disapproves of his work, believing that it is a bad influence on their son Peter, and wants him to move to the sales department. She asks if he informed Frank of his decision, but Remy lies, saying he didn't get the chance, and he'll do so on Monday. While they drive away, Jake tells Remy that Carol is trying to get his pay cut in half, and that the two are only good at being repo. On the way, they find an obese person, and believing he has a fake organ for which he hasn't paid yet, scan the barcode of it, and learns he still has two days till his due date. They terrorize him and drive to a club, where Remy becomes infatuated with a female singer. He returns home and tries to flirt with Carol, but she's dismissive of his advances. He goes to meet Peter, finds him asleep, and wakes him up for a little chat. They hold a family barbecue the following day. While managing the grill, Jake gets a call from the company, informing him that one of the customers he has to repo is a guest at Remy's house. Jake asks Remy for his approval. Though he is hesitant at first, Jake tells him that it entails a double commission, which the two will share, and Remy allows him to perform the repossession. Jake discreetly performs the incision in the taxi, but is caught by Carol, who leaves with Peter in anger, and tells Remy to make a decision. Remy decides to talk with Frank, and while the two are patrolling, they discover a nest, a refuge for Union customers who have defaulted on payments for their artifacts and are attempting to escape the country. They arm themselves with non-lethal weapons and raid the nest by themselves, fighting the security and the customers. When Remy and Jake are almost overpowered, they are forced to use knives. They return to Frank with their spoils of 32 organs and inform him that two of the customers had scan jammers, which showed them free and clear upon scanning. They still repossess their organs to confirm. Frank is impressed and offers them the opportunity to become full-time raid captains. Remy declines and attempts to ask Frank to transfer to sales, but Jake cuts him off. While they're driving away, Jake tells Remy that what they do is important, but Remy's mind is made up. Jake suggests that Remy's last job is with a musician he is a fan of, T-Bone, so he would have enough money to take Carol on a holiday after his job change. He visits T-Bone, a sole musician in debt, who assumes Remy is from the IRS, but Remy reveals he's from the Union. T-Bone asks for his help to finish his last song and gives him the USB to give it to his producer, before laying down to allow Remy to perform the repossession. He uses a defibrillator in order to stop the artificial heart, but the device malfunctions and Remy is knocked unconscious. He recalls how on previous occasions, he was knocked out once when he served in the military with Jake, and the second time when he and Jake caused a scene in a club. Remy wakes up in the hospital and sees Jake and Frank, who inform him that Carol has just left, and that his accident was caused by a faulty shock unit. When Frank informs him that the accident requires the replacement of his heart with an artifog, Remy becomes furious, asking for the replacement to be removed, but Frank informs him that he cannot let his best repo man die. Remy forcefully removes the pipes from his heart and tries to crawl away, but passes out, and the replacement surgery is performed. He returns home to discover that his key does not work, and rings the bell. Carol informs him that this is his punishment for taking another job, and refuses to allow him to see Peter. He moves in with Jake, but is no longer enthusiastic about partying with him. When Frank offers him a welcoming party at the office, 
Remy appears distracted. He goes to perform another job, but appears distracted and is caught easily, forcing him to choke the customer out. His hands continue to shake when he's about to perform the incision. He goes to a party with Jake and other repo men, where Jake shares stories of the customers he repossessed from, and Remy discovers he's developed sympathy for the customers. He waits outside his house for Carol and Peter to return, and tries to talk with him and Carol, but Carol shows him a letter from his company, and closes the door on him. When Remy shifts departments, he is unable to lie when he tries sales, and his artificial heart accumulates interest as he delays his payments. When Remy gets his final notice of delayed payment, Jake takes him to a nest with enough artiforgs to clear his debt. When Remy cannot knock the customers out, Jake does it for him, but Remy cannot cut them for repossession either. Furious, Jake demands he stay there until he overcomes his inhibitions. A stunned debtor wakes up and knocks Remy out. Waking up, Remy hears a song he used to hear a singer sing while drinking in a bar with Jake. He looks for the source and encounters Beth, the singer herself. She passes out in his hands. With three days left till Remy's payments are overdue, he takes her to a motel room. After two days of waiting for her to regain control, he uses a scanner and discovers she has numerous artifacts. He goes to buy some food, but when he returns, Beth attacks him. But upon seeing the scar on his chest, she realizes he's also late on his payments. Remy gets an idea, and breaking into the office, Remy attempts to clear Beth's and his own accounts. But Jake interrupts him. Jake tells Remy that his uncle was a notorious bank robber, who eventually went soft and was caught by the police. Remy asks a hesitant Jake who he believes will be sent after him, and tells him that a job is a job, before leaving him with a trank gun. Before running away, Remy goes to visit Peter and says his farewell. On the run, Beth and Remy leave for the abandoned outskirts of the city, and Remy torches his car. Meanwhile, Frank gives the job for Remy to Jake, but Jake tells him to offer it to someone else. The following morning, Remy and Beth go out to scour the rubbish for useless stuff. Beth tells Remy of how she contracted various diseases, was involved in a car crash, and was forced to resort to buying artifacts on the black market after running up severe debts. But she tells him that her lips are real, and the two kiss, and begin a relationship. Beth offers Remy a typewriter she found as a birthday gift, though Remy insists it's not his birthday. Remy decides to document his life as a repo man using the typewriter. While he's working, Beth interrupts him, but she hears someone approaching them. When Remy doesn't, Beth uses a headphone to help him listen with her artificial ears, and they see a repo man approaching them. Remy sets a trap by shifting floors and hiding Beth behind the door, and when he approaches Remy, the collector drops through a hole in the floor. When she comes out to investigate, Beth falls through the same hole, damaging her prosthetic knee. Before the collector can shoot Beth, Remy manages to kill him with the typewriter. Remy steals the collector's car and drives away with Beth, who fixes her prosthetic with black market tools. Remy sneaks into his former workplace by disguising himself as Larry, their mascot, and even manages to get past Jake. He ambushes Frank and attempts to force Frank to clear his account, only to discover that accounts can now only be cleared at the union's central office due to his earlier attempt. However, when Frank tries to talk him out of this, Remy shoots him with the taser and steals scanning jammers he had confiscated during his raid on the nest. He plans to flee the country and get past the security at the airport using the jammers. Frank, infuriated, sends Jake to capture Remy. Though the jammers work, security is alerted by bleeding from Beth's knee, and they're taken aside. When her prosthetic is discovered, a fight with airport security ensues. Jake arrives but is on the other side of a security panel and watches their escape. They go to Asbury, a black market doctor to replace Beth's knee, who is revealed to be the person behind her other prosthetics. He directs her to Alva, his assistant, and Remy watches in shock as Alva uses her nine-year-old daughter to perform the surgery, since she has steadier hands. When they come out of the surgery, they discover Asbury's organs repossessed, and Jake appears, who tries to convince Remy to rejoin him as a repo man. Remy refuses, and Jake reveals he rigged the defibrillator unit that caused his heart to fail, so Remy would continue to work with him. This angers Remy, and they fight while Beth watches. Jake, who is the stronger of the two, manages to knock Remy around. When Beth tries to stop him, he effortlessly pushes her away. Just as Jake knocks Remy out, Beth stuns Jake and wakes him up. An organ repossession raid prompts the two to flee along with other residents of the area. They flee to an underground residence where Remy is subdued by a freedom fighter, until he reveals that he too, has an artificial heart. At night, he wakes up from a nightmare and goes up to see hundreds of dead with their organs extracted. Much to Beth's protest, Remy decides to delete the accounts of all implant clients, since they will always be hunted otherwise. Remy meets Carol and Peter on a train one last time. When Carol starts another argument with him, 
Peter uses Remy's taser to knock her out. Remy gives Peter his manuscript, tells him to read it when he's old, and tells him to seek him in Punta del Este. Frank enters his car, only to find Remy again, who knocks him out and hijacks his car to break into Union headquarters. Finding guards, they are forced to fight their way through the facility to the Union's database. They are able to infiltrate but end up in a lab, where people working on making organs ignore them, except one who begins to walk and locks himself inside a door as Remy and Beth pursue. Suddenly, guards appear and start shooting blindly, shooting even their workers. The two run and try to blend in with Union employees but are identified by the guards and take one employee hostage as Remy shoots them all. He hands the gun to Beth, telling her to shoot anyone who enters the door, while he takes down the remaining employees with knives and a hacksaw. Using Beth's prosthetic eye, they enter and seal themselves inside just as Jake and Frank arrive. However, they don't find any keyboard inside, since the server's only interface is an organ scanner, requiring Remy and Beth to cut themselves open to using the scanner internally on each of their artiforgs, clearing their accounts. Though Beth is hesitant about this, since they have to fight their way out, Remy insists, and Beth performs the scan on his heart. Once his organ is scanned, Remy performs the incisions on Beth to scan her organs. Frank and Jake enter the server room using an artiforg from one of the slain repo men, finding Beth near death, and Remy attempting to scan her heart. Jake is ordered to kill Remy, but Frank asks if she's worth it. When Remy replies that she's worth every job he does, Jake instead kills Frank and helps revive Beth. However, after the scan, the system requires the artiforgs to be placed in the machine. Jake tosses two grenades into the artiforg drawer of the server, with the explosion destroying the mainframe, wiping the records of everyone who has an account with the Union. Remy moves to a tropical beach, enjoying his freedom with Beth and Jake. His text has been published as a book, The Repossession Mambo. While Remy talks to Jake, he notices that Jake suddenly disappears, leaving Remy's book on his chair. Then Remy sees the beach flicker with static before returning to normal. It is revealed that Remy is in a coma, having sustained severe brain damage when Jake knocked him unconscious. Jake has paid off Remy's debt for his heart, and also paid to link his brain to a neural network after raiding the black market, allowing him to live out his life peacefully in a computer-generated dream world. Beth is unconscious, and Jake says he will take care of her. He then says a sorrowful goodbye to Remy. The film ends with Frank delivering a sales pitch for the neural network, and Jake enjoying his tropical holiday with Frank and Beth.